Hello, welcome to We Love TTRPGs. In this video, I'm going to answer the question of which edition of Dungeons & Dragons is the best. Now, for clarity, this isn't a question that keeps me up at night. However, I've seen many arguments around this debate on social media. In fact, that's where you'll typically encounter older players insisting that 5th edition sucks and only 1st or 2nd edition advanced D&D are good. Well, I'm going to solve this debate once and for all. I've been playing D&D since when this was a new thing. This is the Holmes basic set from 1977. When I purchased this, I didn't really have any idea what it was or where that there was even older versions of the game, such as this. My interest in the game was the result of seeing some Grenadier Miniatures boxes in the toy department of a pharmacy. Looked like little metal medieval army men with weird monsters. I wanted to know what they were for. Later that day, my best friend's brother told us about Dungeons & Dragons, explaining it was a very complicated game and I didn't have the intelligence for it. Well, challenge accepted. Oh yeah, I, I still haven't let that one go. I'm like a crow. I hold grudges. So this Holmes edition includes a short sample dungeon, and I ran it for my friends many times. That's how I learned the rules. It wasn't long before I wanted more. And that's when I moved on to the Advanced Dungeons & Dragons 1st Edition. And I've played every version since, with the exception of 4th Edition, which I will discuss later. Before explaining which version or edition of the game is the best, let's discuss our options. Is the Chainmail game from 1971 by Gary Gygax and Jeff Perrin the best version? Chainmail is considered to be the predecessor to Dungeons & Dragons as Gary adopted many of the rules from Chainmail to create the first edition of D&D. Chainmail was focused on medieval warfare and included a set of rules for resolving combat between different types of units. Maybe the best version was the original D&D RPG from 1974. This version was the true first edition that was created by Gary Gagax and Dave Arneson. It was a box set that included three booklets, Men and Magic, Monsters and Treasure, and the Underworld and Wilderness Adventures. The rules were simple and focused on dungeon crawling and exploration. Or maybe the best version was my basic Dungeons and Dragons from 1977. This box set was designed to be an entry point for new players that included a simplified set of rules and was aimed at younger audiences. Then in 1981, the D&D Expert set was released. It was designed to be a companion to the basic set and provided additional rules and options for players who wanted to expand their game beyond the introductory levels. The expert set included a new rulebook, an adventure module titled The Isle of Dread, and a set of dice. My best friend purchased the expert set at the same time I bought the basic set. Unfortunately, his mother eventually burned all of his D&D books when she discovered that we weren't actually just playing a creative game of the imagination, but instead, summoning Lucifer to do his bidding. That's right, the Satanic Panic was the most ridiculous version of cancel culture yet. Also in 1977, we saw the release of Advanced Dungeons & Dragons, commonly called First Edition AD&D. This was a more complex version of the game building on the rules established in the original D&D. It was split up into two main hardback rulebooks, the Player's Handbook and the Dungeon Master's Guide. A third book, the Monster Manual, was also released as a supplement. I spent many, many days and nights throughout the 80s playing the first edition AD&D game. Oh, those 12-hour marathon gaming sessions on weekends were the best. Then we were blessed with the second edition AD&D released in 1989. This edition was a major revision of the game designed to be more accessible with a better presentation and refinement of the previous edition. And I played second edition AD&D from 1989 until the year 2000 when the 3rd edition Dungeons & Dragons was released. 3rd edition introduced many new mechanics, including the D20 system. Should we point out that it was only three years earlier in 1997 when Wizards of the Coast purchased TSR, the company that originally owned Dungeons & Dragons? At the time of the acquisition, TSR was struggling financially. This acquisition included all of TSR's intellectual property, including Dungeons & Dragons, as well as the company's employees and facilities. Wizards of the Coast was the creators of the popular Magic the Gathering card game, a game that was itself a derivative of Dungeons and Dragons, with its creators looking to turn D&D into as simple a format as possible. Thus, the card game was born. 3rd edition D&D soon became 3.5 when just three years later, in 2003, 
the revised 3.5 edition was released in an attempt to address many of the balance issues and rules clarifications that arose from the third edition. It was also designed to be more compatible with other D20-based games. And five years after that, in 2008, the Dungeons & Dragons 4th edition was released. This was a significant departure from previous editions. It was designed to be more tactical and included many new mechanics, such as powers and daily encounter powers for characters. I've had no interest in ever playing 4th edition, though I have many of the book. And then in 2014, we received the Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition. This is the current edition until 1D&D &D is released. Oh wait, I'm sorry, what? Uh, okay, I'm hearing that they've changed the name to, are you ready for this? Uh, they decided to call it 5th edition. Yes, that's right. The next edition of D&D after 5th edition is, as of the time of this recording, slated to be called 5th edition. Okay, so maybe we can call it 5.5. Anyway, the existing 5th edition was designed to be a return to the roots of the game, and in many ways, as I have been saying for some time, seems the most like my original 1977 Holmes Basic Edition, more so than any other past version of the game. So with all that think about, those past editions in mind, let's address the subject of this video, the big question, which edition of D&D really is the best? Are you ready for this? Now this might be controversial. Some may disagree, but I can guarantee you I'm absolutely 100% correct about this. The best edition of Dungeons & Dragons out of every edition ever released, it's whichever edition you play, whichever edition you get the most enjoyment from. Yep, it's as easy as that. Contrary to what some people argue on social media and contrary to my feelings about fourth edition, the best version of Dungeons & Dragons is whatever version you're playing and finding the most enjoyment from. And you can apply this perspective to more than just this debate about previous versions of D&D. You see, people often confuse memories and feelings of their youth with material facts. When you see people arguing that 5th edition sucks and only 1st and 2nd edition AD&D are any good, just remember, those people are incorrectly conflating their memories of youth with the game mechanics. When I came into 5th edition, there were plenty of things I didn't like. And that was a bit off-putting at first. But you know what? The same was true of previous editions as well. They all had their problems. And we all may agree or disagree as to what those issues might have been. And this will continue to be true of future editions as well. And that's why we have house rules. That's why the game encourages flexibility. Everyone can play their game at their table the way they enjoy it most. One of the really great qualities about Dungeons & Dragons is the game is played in a variety of styles with many adapting their own house rules. The afterword of the AD&D First Edition Dungeon Master's Guide says, it is the spirit of the game, not the letter of the rules which is important. Never hold to the letter written, nor allow some barracks room lawyer to force quotations from the rulebook upon you if it goes against the obvious intent of the game. And every edition of the game has approved and supported this interpretation of the game. It's the spirit of the game, not the rules that are most important. Don't like an official rule? Change it. Just try to be consistent. As a DM, you need to create an air of verisimilitude in your fantasy gaming world. I'll cover that in a future video. Every argument involving disagreements over which edition is best could be time better spent playing D&D, whichever version you enjoy most. The best edition of the game will depend on your personal preferences and the type of game you want to play. It's worth trying out a few different editions to see which one works best for you, just like it's best trying out different RPG rule systems and different settings, especially as a game master. In the end, we're just glad you're playing D&D, no matter which version you're playing, because it's an amazing game, a terrific hobby, and I'm forever thankful it's been there throughout my life. And with that in mind, I'll be making a video about how D&D has improved my life and the lives of others. Look for that when it's released. Go on, tell me what you think in the comments. What's your favorite edition and why? Until then, I'm your host, App. If you've enjoyed this video, please stab that like button, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you won't miss any future uploads.